In this guide, I'll walk you through the ultimate RetroArch setup for Dreamcast emulation. Let's jump right in. I just want to quickly mention that if you're unfamiliar with some of the settings and configuration of RetroArch, be sure to check out our RetroArch setup playlist. The link is in the description below. Now on to the good stuff. Begin by going to the online updater and core downloader in RetroArch. We're going to scroll all the way down to the Sega Dreamcast slash Naomi Flycast core. As a quick tip, with a core highlighted, you can press the select button on your gamepad to bring up additional information. Let's go ahead and download the core. Next, under settings and then drivers, make sure your video driver is set to Vulkan for best performance. To add games to RetroArch, go to Import Content, and if your ROM files are single files, for example GDI or CHD, just select Scan Directory. Navigate to the location of your ROMs and select Scan Directory once again. If your ROMs are bin and queue, then we need to use a manual scan, otherwise you're going to have duplicate entries for each game. So again, under Content Directory, select the location of your ROMs and then select Scan This Directory. The system name should be Sega Dreamcast. The default core will be Flycast. And then under File Extensions, enter CUE or Q and hit Start or Enter. Lastly, select Start Scan and you should end up with a Dreamcast playlist entry within RetroArch. Now we want to run a game. With the game running, open the quick menu and then go to core options where we will dial in our configuration. Under system, everything can be left at default unless you'd like to enter the original Dreamcast BIOS when launching a game. In that case, set boot to BIOS is on and you'll also need to have a Dreamcast BIOS file and it needs to go in the RetroArch slash system slash DC subdirectory. Otherwise this can be left it off. Before we get into the graphics and shader settings, here's a look at the specs of the system I'm currently on, which gives me excellent Dreamcast performance. If your system is similar, you should also expect very good performance. Or feel free to bump up the resolution if you have a more powerful setup. So under video and resolution, I suggest the very least you go is 1440 by 1080 for full 1080p emulation. You can also go for 2880 by 2160 for 4K if your system can handle it. Set the cable type to VGA. There are a few games that will have graphical issues if this is set to anything else. Set alpha sorting to per pixel. Otherwise, you may see some graphical glitches in certain games. Anisotropic filtering can be set at 16 for added visual clarity. The rest of the settings can be left at their defaults, but feel free to read through the descriptions as some of these settings might apply to a specific game you intend to emulate. Under performance, make sure that threaded rendering is on or else emulation might bog down on your system. Under emulation hacks, a nice little feature here are the widescreen cheats. A number of games have patches available that provide full widescreen support, so enabling this option will automatically apply those patches when a game is launched. Finally, under Visual Memory Unit is a cool feature that allows you to see the VMU display on screen while playing. Now this is done by turning the VMU screen display on for any particular player. Many Dreamcast games displayed fun little graphics and even helpful information on the VMU while playing, so this is a nice touch. It's up to you whether you want to use this setting or not. To really take things to the next level and add that wow factor to Dreamcast emulation in RetroArch, I suggest that you use the Mega Bezel Shader Pack by Hyperspace Madness along with overlays that have been developed by Dewimon. 
I've covered this in previous tutorials, most recently my Nintendo 64 RetroArch setup tutorial, so be sure to check that out if you're interested, the link is in the description below. If retro emulation is your hobby, CRT shaders are an excellent way to boost the experience. With that being said, here's a little montage of gameplay footage that shows what Dreamcast emulation in RetroArch makes possible. I'm all right, but Hazuki Sensei. Uh... My father? Well, that'll wrap things up. If you found this guide to be helpful, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and maybe even subscribing to the channel. 
Until next time, happy gaming, my friends. <laughs>